sun's getting ready to well sun's up but it's fixing to pop over those trees good nice chilly morning great day to be out shooting good morning everybody it's a cool crisp morning here at my neck of the woods if you will it's uh it's definitely winter time and i'm enjoying it very much now i wanted to make this video the part two to the hungarian longbow that i actually picked up wanted to review it a little bit more talk about some of the specs uh, take some shots with it now this bow is a really good bow um, i'm really liking it i'm really frustrated too at the same time just trying to get used to the different style but that's not the bow's problem that's my problem that i've got to work out but let's talk about the bow let's take some shots and let's uh finish out this review of it so the bow comes in at 54 inches long the string length is a 51 inch string uh, that's the one thing you're going to have to do with this bow once you get it. You're going to have to determine if you want to keep the string or not. And the reason I say that, and I'll get a close-up of this in just a minute, is because I have no idea what this string is made out of. It looks like nylon. Uh, it's made into an endless loop pattern. The thing that I say, the reason I say rather, that you're going to have to change this out is because of the center serving on this, it is so thick it's hard to get knocks to pop on there or come off easily. When you put the knock on, you can actually spin it and the whole string turns. I did make a new endless loop string, but I wanted to give the bow a review with the string that it came with, uh, just to be fair to it, if you will. The description says you can shoot a fast flight string with this thing. I'm not real sure that you can do that uh, because there's no reinforcement there. And I've seen a lot of other reviews, or a few other reviews rather, that a lot of noise is coming from the, the uh, string groove here with the stock string. So I've not really experienced that, but the string is really thick. So you probably want, if you do invest in one of these, you probably want to switch out that string as soon as possible. Overall, the string it comes with, if you just need to get up and shoot, it works well. So let's get it strung up and let's talk a little bit more about the bow. Okay, so stringing up this bow goes against everything that I do on a regular basis. I am not an advocate for stepping through and stringing a bow that way, but this is the way you have to string these. I guess you could probably use a stringer as well. Not sure. So let's get her done. Hopefully I can do this without falling down the hill. And there you go, strung up. Okay, so now that the bow's strung up, let's talk a little bit about it. You do have mulberry seas, which transition into fiberglass. Fiberglass runs the length of the bow back into another mulberry sea. How these things are put together uh, at the transition, I don't know. I'm not cutting the twine off to see. Just basic twine to kind of cover that transition up and to hold the leather in place. Now, they say this is cow leather. Not real sure if it is. It looks more like just uh, imitation leather to me, which is fine. It's okay. <clears throat> it is fiberglass. You're going to experience some hand shock with it. Now, the bow that I actually ordered, I ordered at a 35-pound draw, and I put this on a scale and tested it. It actually comes in at about 33.5 pounds when I get back to my 30-inch draw. Uh, so again, a little bit off on the, uh, the weight of the bow, but that's okay. I'm actually glad that I got it at, at a little bit lower than 35. If I reordered it or reordered another one, I would definitely go with a 30 pound maybe or even lower uh, just to get used to this because shooting thumb draw is really tough uh, and you do put your thumb through some, some agony, if you will. Now, because of the style of this bow, there is no shelf to note, but you do have this reversed piece of leather here to kind of give you an idea or a reference of where the shelf would actually be if there were a shelf on this bow. So using that, what I did uh, and the comments that I got about this bow, that the knocking point needs to be high, I just kind of put an arrow on there and put the arrow across the top end here. And that's about a thumb's width, uh, which puts it about where it needs to be so you can actually get the uh, knock point on your string. Do you need one on here? Uh, a lot of people say yes, a lot of people say no. Uh, I guess it's just a matter of preference. Overall, I can say that I'm really impressed with this bow. Uh, for 99 bucks, what I paid for it, I don't think you can beat it just to get into this sport. Now, is it the best in the world? No, there are better. Now, the next big thing is, how do you shoot this thing? <laughs> I'm still trying to figure that out. <laughs> but let's get set up and let's take a few shots. Yes, I'm a wuss. I have to warm my fingers up before I shoot because it's cold. <laughs> Sun is coming up though. It's going to be nice. 
Okay, so we're gonna take some shots with this bow. Now I wanna talk a little bit about the string itself. I'm gonna show you how, what I was talking about earlier about how thick this string is or the serving material on the string. Um, actually, putting your arrows on there, unless you have some really wide-throated knocks, what's gonna happen is, I want you to hear this and kinda of see it if you can. I get that on there. You really have to force that knock onto the string. So you really want to, I would say, uh, if you don't have the ability to make a string, uh, I would at least purchase one. Now the string length is 51 inches long, so I would definitely pick one up. Again, I don't think you can use fast flight on these because there is no reinforcement in there. You may be able to, I don't know. All right, so let's take some shots with this thing. Let me get my thumb tab out if I can find it. Yep, there it is. And kudos to you guys who can shoot without having to use a thumb protector. That's not me. <laughs> so Now my grip, or the way I'm actually pulling back, uh, I had to do a little bit of a modification with that. Instead of the one finger, I'm using two. Um, that may be right, may be wrong, but I think it's like anything else, archery. Whatever works for you, that's what you should do. So let's take some shots. I'm gonna move the camera back a little bit and we will see how it's working. Okay. That was ugly. And I know my release is ugly. So don't beat me up too bad. I'm still learning. It's only been a week. Not real happy about that. So overall, I mean... Decent shooting little bow for a hundred bucks. You can't beat that. It's just getting used to the different style. And that's the good thing about archery, learning new things and growing and expanding uh, and getting better at the things you're trying. So let's go check the arrows out. I mean, it's ugly, but let's go look at it. So, so as you can tell, not the best shooting in the world, but again, at least I got on the target. That's <laughs> truly all that matters. Uh, oh, I've lost a knock. I bet that knock is still on the string up there. That's what I was telling you. Look at this. <laughs> that ain't that strange. That is just weird. I bet if I go back and look at that string, that knock is there or at least somewhere near it. So again, that string is a little too thick for this. Uh, I may switch out to my other string that I made. But let's take some more shots, man. I'm enjoying this. <laughs> I didn't even notice this. Note to self. You can't use QAD tuna knocks with this string. <laughs> I'm surprised that arrow even made it down to the target. <laughs> um, that's funny. That's just hilarious. And my last arrow with a knock that works. All right, so it's getting a little bit better. All my knocks are still on the arrows. <laughs> That's a good thing. <laughs> so let's try a little bit longer distance and see how I fare. <laughs> I missed the target. <laughs> well, at least I hit it that time. So I'm going to switch this string out to the string I made, see if that makes a difference uh, in the way this thing shoots at a longer distance because I think the knocks are having trouble uh, coming off the string and it's causing erratic arrow flight or accuracy issues. So let me change that out real quick and then I'll take a few more shots. Okie dokie, ready to go. Yeah, much better. Switching out the string definitely helped the accuracy. So I don't know, still I hit the target this time, every time from that longer distance. Again, still got to work on it. It's a, 
it's it's fun to try new things it can be frustrating at times but i can tell you this much just stick with it uh you'll get better i promise you that you will no matter what you're trying uh, before when i first started shooting this i wasted about three or four arrows like i said in my previous video at least i'm hitting the target now that's a good thing so <laughs> and the rest will come later so there you have it my review and shooting of the hungarian style longbow by longbow maker again you can pick these up on amazon for 99 dollars. i've seen them for like 109 but you can get a package deal uh, i think you get some arrows maybe a quiver arm guard something like that but for what you pay for this bow it's a great entry level uh, bow into this style of archery now a few things about the bow like i said before you're definitely going to need to change out the string because the string that comes with it, while it does get you up and shooting, there's not a lot of knocks that I've seen that fit on that, or none that I have rather, that fit on that string uh, well and release well from that. So you're gonna have to either make a string or find one that's uh, a little bit thinner, if you will. So <laughs> but overall, great shooting bow, a little bit of hand shock, not a bad deal, not a deal breaker, because it is a fiberglass bow, you're going to experience that. And plus, you know, getting used to this style your form, getting your thumb conditioned to where you can pull back comfortably and hold that weight, uh, your release, your katra, if you will. I'm still trying to figure all that out. So I know it looks kind of horrendous, but that's the beauty of this, learning something new and being able to acquire a new skill, if you will. So I want to say thank you to Handy, Paul Weber, and I think I'm pronouncing this right, Araya, Araya, for the tips and comments and the video links. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. It's helped me out a lot. Uh, hopefully I didn't butcher this thing too bad today, and hopefully at least it entertained you some. So thank you for coming by and, and hanging out with me for a little bit on this cold Sunday morning. Uh, I do appreciate it very much. Thank you to my new subscribers and thank you to all my subscribers for thinking enough of my content to come by and hang out with me when I post new videos. Also, my website, blueskiesarchery.com, I started a new thing on that. I'm doing what's called a subscriber spotlight. So if you have some pictures or you have you know, some video clips of you out shooting or, you know, some of the things that you've done with archery, send those to me uh, at blueskiesarchery at gmail.com. I would love to post those on there and let you be, you know, part of the subscriber spotlight because, you know, the community for archery is such a, a vast and broad community and there's some really great people here. And I just want to give back in some way just to say thank you for, you know, investing your time in me. So again, I hope you all have a great day today. I hope you have a better day tomorrow and a wonderful week ahead of you. And until next time.